And welcome back to another edition of ECW here on Tuesday nights. And why, why do we have to kick off the show for you tonight? Tag team match, and we've got The Miz and John Morrison taking on Truth and Consequences, Our truth and Mike Knox. And the winner of this match will move on to SmackDown this week on Friday night to challenge MVP and Umaga better than Utopia for the WWE Tag Team Championships. As MVP and Umaga are very close to coming up on their 30 days as champions, and they have not defended the belts yet. They have gotten, gotten some big wins, including winning the titles, and a big win over Ezekiel Jackson and Vladimir Kozlov. But both these teams have wins in their back pockets, if you will. And we're going to see what they can do. Uh, once again, a tag team action. And again, the winner will <laughs> move on to this week's SmackDown to challenge for the tag team titles. Of course, Mike Knox made his debut here on ECW despite being a SmackDown superstar teaming up with R-Truth. And they defeated Crime Time with Mike Knox pinning the then number one contender for the ECW World Championship, JTG. As ever since JTG got that win and of course followed suit getting a big win over Ted DiBiase when Ted DiBiase Jr. was making his debut here on ECW. But ever since then, they have started to fall from grace a little bit. But nonetheless, tag match is underway, and we've got R-Truth and John Morrison kicking things off. On a big dropkick right in the face of John Morrison, and Truth adding insult to injury right now, with Morrison, Morrison was in his own corner, but a big leg drop to the back of the neck from R-Truth. Beautifully done. And of course, R-Truth, he won his debut match against Christian here on ECW. Mike Knox, again, like I said, his debut match was teamed up with R-Truth here on ECW, and they beat Crime Time in tag action with Mike Knox getting the pin. Oh, look at R-Truth here. Reverse suplex off the top rope. Very nice. That reverse superplex. And Truth is really dominating and taking it to John Morrison. Miz and Morrison looks good in their tag action debut against Carlito and Primo. They had a match on SmackDown, which they can do because of the current deal between the ECW and SmackDown general managers. As Morrison thought about tagging out to The Miz, decided against it, and R-Truth going to make him pay. But a big splash there. You better watch out, because Mike Knox can tag himself in if needed. But Morrison now getting some good big shots in, and Mike Knox gonna hold Morrison back, allow Truth to take advantage. But Morrison, he and Miz know that trick all too well. Oh, and once again, Morrison gonna fight him off again. But Truth moves out the way to kick that time, and a big neck breaker, big neck breaker, knocking him down. And Morrison and Truth just giving it their all right now. Back and forth constantly, and it's pretty much... Oh, big lie detector there. Like I was say, it felt like more of a one-on-one -on -one match with Miz and Mike Knox just being a little too close if they were managers. But Mike Knox is in the ring now, and immediately going for the legs of John Morrison. Again, smart strategy no matter who you face, no matter who you are. You go for the legs, like I always say, you take out the base, you pre you prevent them from doing pretty much anything and everything. But Mike Knox here, he's got the upper hand, picking up right where our truth left off. But Morrison now with a Frankensteiner raining down the right hands on the big man. Now onto the apron. Oh, I thought he might want to springboard, decided against it. And Mike Knox going to bring Miz in the ring. And now going to bring John Morrison into the ring. Mike Knox is a powerful guy. He's really been showing off. And look at that big shoulder tackle. Almost just pouncing on top of him. As he's got a one. He's got a two. He's got a three. 
What a big, quick, dominant victory for our truth and Mike Knox. And once again, truth and consequences, they get a good win. And only in their second tag match, they are moving on to face Crime Time, not Crime Time, they're moving on to face Better Than Utopia, MVP and Umaga, this week on SmackDown. And with how good they've been looking, they very well could be making, or could be giving MVP and Umaga a run for their money, and maybe even taking the WWE Tag Team Championships. But that is for a later date this week. Our next match, we've got JBL, fresh after coming, uh, beating Tommy Dreamer in a very quick, decisive win here on ECW. He's here after the Rumble now. He is going to be facing the debuting Festus. And now here we go. Match underway. And John Bradshaw Layfield. JBL. JBL, he has turned a new leaf than you would normally expect from this man. The man who is extremely egotistical calls himself the wrestling god whenever he gets a chance. But he's actually been defending the honor of just wrestling in general, if you will, as Tommy Dreamer. He's been trying to brutalize and decimate his opponents and beat them until they cannot compete anymore. By refusing to go for pinfalls, to continue using as many weapons and underhanded tactics as he can before eventually putting people away. And it's all completely backfired for Dreamer, as he does not have a single win here in Universe. But we got Festus coming to the ring now. His good buddy Jesse has not debuted on Raw quite yet. His good buddy Jesse also just got the brakes beaten off of him by William Regal in the in the uh, locker room back on Raw as we learned recently. But Fest is gonna make his debut and see what he can do. But yeah like Dreamer everything has backfired for him and JBL he said enough was enough he was supposed to have a one-on-one -on -one match with Chavo Guerrero. Dreamer decided to hijack it, come out with technically the stolen hardcore title. He went to WWE storage facilities, found the hardcore title, stole it, and brought it with him to ECW. Which we were going to bring the title in anyway. He just expedited the process. And nonetheless, a oh, big neck breaker from Vestas there. But nonetheless, JBO had enough of what Dreamer was doing in that triple threat and what he did to Cody Rhodes, even despite Dreamer losing. So nonetheless, as Fe JBL can't get anything going against Festus right now, but finally back on his feet and going to drop him with that DDT. Yeah, like I said, JBL, he had enough of Dreamer. And then he demanded a one-on-one -on -one match. As Festus played him like a fiddle there. And the veteran JBL, look at, I mean, like I said, being played like a fiddle. I try to get some big shots in now. But again, after that triple threat, he demanded a one-on-one, -on -one, and he made Dreamer look like an absolute fool. Of course, Dreamer not happy. He had uh, some very interesting words for JBL after JBL didn't do the greatest in the Royal Rumble match this past Sunday. And that bad luck from the Rumble clearly picking up or continuing for JBL. As again, Festus, he is looking very good. 
But JBL trying to get anything going in the crowd. You know, they've been a little bit more behind JBL than they ever have been. Except for, well, except for maybe back when he was teaming up with Ron Simmons, Farouk. Back with the APA. But how could you not like the APA? Just two big dudes just beating the hell out of their opponents and then having some beers afterward. And JBL got to stoop a little bit low there. Go back to some of his older tactics. But Festus, he is absolutely having his way with JBL. Again, JBL trying to get anything and everything going. Trying to get momentum in his corner. And he's going to keep him on the outside. On, That's exactly what JBL is going to do. I think he's had enough of Festus already. Just going to keep him on the outside. But back in the ring now. And a big DDT. Fess is finally repaying the favor for the couple of JBLs giving him on the referee. Oh, the referee managed to stay on his feet there. And Fest is another DDT. And another DDT. JBL cannot get anything going against Festus right now. JBL with a Desperately trying anything here as JBL with a belly to back. Oh, moved out the way of the big boot. Oh, before he could get another one. Festus takes him down again. But there's the big boot. As JBL, like I said, doing anything to get back in there but a shoulder block. Big shoulder tackle from Festus and he may be going for a cover. Dragging him away from the ropes, he is. And got a near fall on the self-proclaimed wrestling god. And a big hip toss there. And just putting the boots to the chest again. Like I said, doing anything to get the upper hand over Festus here. But Festus takes him off his feet. Oh no, look at this, a Boston Crab. Boston Crab wrenching back as much as he can. And JBL powers out. Could you imagine the state of the ECW locker room if Festus beats JBL? Tommy Dreamer will not let JBL live it down. Festus counters it. But Festus looking very good right now. This could be big. But JBL gonna drop him with a gut buster. Finally starting to really get something going here. Knees to the face. And a shoulder tackle knocks him down. But JBL immediately getting back up. The fighting spirit from JBL. Belly to belly. But another shoulder tackle. Festus will not stay down. These men really going all out on, a, on one another. Festus has a counter for it feels like everything. And everything, JBL, every time JBL tried to get something going... He, it just does not work. And now Festus, look at this. Choke slam. 
big choke slam. And got a win! Festus, a gigantic victory in his debut match. Pinning John Bradshaw Layfield. Absolutely huge victory. Every single time JBL tried to get anything going in that match, Festus shut it down and JBL got some good shots in. Don't get me wrong, it's JBL for Christ's sakes. But Festus standing tall, looking incredibly dominant. But now it's time for our main event, which is another tag team match. We've got Crime Time scheduled to go... Two on two with Ted DiBiase, and he's been running around the back, screaming at everyone, saying that he he's got a secret in his he's got a secret man in his corner. He will he will have a tag team partner tonight, but he won't of course say who it is. And now it's time for the tag team match, and here is Ted DiBiase coming off of a loss at. In his debut here on ECW, he somehow had the ECW champion in his corner, but Cody Rhodes has confirmed that he was not there to help Ted DiBiase. He was only there to scout out who he figured was going to be named number one contender for his title. And that's exactly what he did. There's been no other partnerships at all with Cody and Ted. Ted did not show up during the match with JTG and Cody Rhodes at the Royal Rumble. But let's see who is his partner in... Ted DiBiase looking furious, looking irate. But he, I guess he just doesn't have a tag team partner because Crime Time making their way to the ring right now. Of course, they lost in their tag match debut against Truth and Consequences, who, of course, we now know will be moving on to SmackDown this week to challenge MVP and Umaga for the WWE Tag Team Championships. But this would still be a big win nonetheless, even if it ends up being a handicap match like it seems it's gonna be. But Ted clearly doesn't have a partner. At least from what I can tell, he does not. Unless they're going to come out after crime time. But I doubt it. And that is not the case. And we know crime time are on the same page. That's for sure. But Ted shoving Shad Gaspard away. Doing whatever he can to get an advantage over the big man. And just, oh, playing dirty, grabbing him by the hair. Had that well Ted realizing that whatever partner he was screaming in the back about having, he cl clearly did not actually have a partner. He saw it I want to see where this is going to go. That's for sure. Oh, and a throwback. What a way to flip over the top by Shad. And a shining wizard too. Shad is a big guy and he's moving really well, that's for sure. As Ted stops outside the ring. And Shad's saying, don't you dare lay your hands on my tag team partner, my best friend. You know, obviously not unless he is the legal man, but a drop kick and JTG accidentally knocks Shad down there. 
A rebound it off of the table right into the waiting arms of Ted DiBiase to just drop him onto the thin padding we call, or the thin layer over the concrete we call padding. But Ted DiBiase just getting way too cocky. That Shad looking good. Oh, in the corner. Preventing Crime Time from getting a tag out. Float over DDT. He it. And Shad is trying like crazy. What a big lariat. Now JTG in the ring. Ted DiBiase has lost to JTG in the past. Now look at this, million dollar dream! Million dollar dream! He didn't keep it, he didn't make JTG tap out instead of just slamming him to the canvas. Oh now look at this, look at this, JTG! Dream Street! I know Ted DiBiase calls that move Dream Street. And Shad makes the save! Even if they end up losing, they have amazing chemistry with one another. Float over DDT, and Ted DiBiase busted wide open. As Shad made a very, like, last second save against Truth and Consequences. As now a Frankensteiner from JTG doing what he can. Ted DiBiase, though, he is absolutely held his own and he would have lost had Shad not been there but the road first rolling neck snap and now look at this leg drop bulldog got a one got a two got a three Ted, Ted DiBiase put up a hell of a fight against Crime Time here tonight. And again, if Shad would not have been there, he would have beaten JTG after that dream streak. But he needs to go to the back, clean himself up, and figure out what went wrong, who was supposed to be his tag team partner, and why the hell did they not come out to the ring with him? Why did they leave him to be brutal, not brutalized, but just beaten down by Crime Time? Because you can't blame Crime Time. They were just doing their jobs, and they got a good win regardless, even if it was a handicap match. They didn't know it was going to be a handicap match. They were told constantly it was going to be a tag team match. But that's something for Ted DiBiase to figure out, and Crime Time can move on. But that was another edition of ECW. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, comment down below, share it up on social media, do all that good stuff, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye, guys.